Good morning, Arizona. This is Kyle Smith, and with me, a special guest star. You've seen him before. He's number two in the studio, but number one in your hearts. <laughs> Joseph Smith. What up, everybody? It's my daddy. Hey, good morning. Hey, good morning. What's up to all my people in the struggle at the U.S. Postal Service? What up, Craig Wells, out there giving professional customer service? Yes, you, you guys are the real heroes. You're the daily Santas. <laughs> yeah, we bring you all that junk. Yeah. You're welcome. Speaking of junk, did it... Michael Bloomberg! <laughs> Michael Bloomberg. So, Michael Bloomberg, billionaire and um, Democrat presidential candidate. Well, Democrat it, again this time around. Yeah, is, is in some hot water for some leaked audio. Now, this audio is actually leaked by a, a pro-Bernie podcast. I'm not sure how they actually got this audio, but it's only a minute, so we'll play it for you, give you the context of what we're about to talk about. I am of your murders and murderers and murder victims. Then one MO. You can just take the description and zero it and pass it out to all the cops. They are male minority citizens is why you're right. That's true in New York, it's true in virtually every city in the And that's where the real crime is. You've got to get the guns out of the hands of the people that get killed. She's so done. If you want to send the money to a lot of cops in the street, put those cops where the crime is, which means in the minority neighborhood. So it's a really unaffected. Unintended consequences is people say, oh my God, you are arresting kids for marijuana that are all minorities. Yes, that's true. Why? Because we put all the cops in the minority neighborhoods. Yes, that's true. Why do we do it? Because that's where all the crime is. And the way you get the guns out of the kids' hands is uh, to throw them against the wall and frisk them. They get them and they start, they say, oh, I don't want that. I don't want to get caught. So they don't bring the gun. They still have it, but they leave it at home. Now, there are definitely some things that audio that in that audio that I don't agree with. At the same time, I don't think it's it's the big bombshell other people are making it out to be. Um, even President Trump tweeted out the audio and said Bloomberg is a total racist before then deleting it. Later saying that he rethought it. And didn't want to divide the country further, but it it is is it a popular opinion to be calling Bloomberg a racist as of right now. Well, my problem is not even with what Bloomberg said, or if you want to think it's racist, not racist. That's that's up to you. My problem is always with the left and their hypocrisy, because stop and frisk is unconstitutional you're racially profiling people he even says in the audio that they start they stop far too many white people and not enough black that, that people. Was in, that was in a, it was in that was in a different interview but yeah right uh, but he says that on tape in an interview and you have the left because he's a democrat now protecting this guy and of course you know you got your professional shakedown artists like al sharpton who uh, over the years, Bloomberg has bought favor with by donating to his foundation, which we all know Al Sharpton can be bought, easily bought, you know, so. And it's funny because Al Sharpton every day says Donald Trump's a racist, yet Al Sharpton has given Donald Trump awards in the past. Jesse Jackson has, in the Rainbow Coalition, have given him awards in the past for the cultural diversity of his companies. Right. Um, my biggest problem is I don't believe in stop and frisk at all. It's unconstitutional. Uh, there's no probable cause. It's just, hey, you look kind of suspicious. <laughs> I, I get to frisk you. Um, it, it does tend to, to lead to racial profiling, uh, which is even what he's, he's asking for. Now, it makes sense to put more cops into more dangerous communities, which are often minority communities. And that's the part where I say, well, I don't think that's racist. But I don't believe in stop and frisk to begin with, or the disarmament of people. I'm a big pro-Second Amendment per 
person other than perhaps the disarmament of priorly convicted uh, violent individuals. But then again, then why would they even be on the streets in the first place unless you have lenient left-leaning laws? <laughs> and um, what he did say about uh, unintended consequence of is, is people saying, oh, why are only minorities being um, arrested for marijuana or in such large numbers? And I always thought that yeah, that's an unintended consequence of having more cops in more dangerous areas, which are minority, and thereby, since there are more cops there, there are more arrests for marijuana, but I don't think marijuana should be illegal to begin with. But that is a decent point where it's, it's not... I don't think it's a racial thing on the marijuana. It's just that there happens to be more cops in those areas to begin with. Well, you could just take race totally out of it. It's more violent crimes happen in... Uh, because of socioeconomic areas, it, you have depressed wages, low income, you tend to have more violent crimes. It doesn't, I mean, it could be a totally white neighborhood that's a depressed neighborhood, and you're probably going to have a lot of violent crimes there. So, you know. Right. S statistically, what he was saying wasn't false. Uh, the leading cause of death for black men aged 15 to 34 is homicide. Um, for white individuals, that, that shoots way down. I think that barely makes the top 10. Um, uh, black individuals make up 52% of convicted murderers and 48% of murder victims. So what he's saying, statistically, what he was saying wasn't, you know, racist and... I don't know them, but uh, I think a lot of people talk about that, have the good intent of they they'd re they want to bring those numbers down because that protects black individuals. That doesn't hurt them. So I, I think the racist portion is a little out of proportion on this audio. But again, I don't believe in the stop and frisk in general or uh, the disarmament of people. Well, once again, for me, it's not so much what he said because... I'd rather that these tapes be out there, and it's so funny because a lot of people forget that, uh, you know, any almost anything you say now ends up on the internet and it's there forever. But my thing is, hey, we should know how how all these candidates really feel, and and now we know how he felt about the stop and frisk, whether he's gone on his apology tour or not. My thing is with just the hypocrisy of the left who say it's racist for only one half the country, but, oh, that's different when it's one of their own. Man, make a stand. Have some morals. Well, Good Lord. What I, what, what I think is hypocritical is that, that he, he's okay with violating the rights of U.S. citizens and stop and frisk, but a border wall, that's not okay. <laughs> just, just, yeah. just, just keeping out, just helping to keep out those drugs he's talking about or potentially those illegal weapons. You know, that's, that's not good. A border wall is not good. But, but then violating people when they're here, that's okay. That makes no sense. Yeah. So. Uh, I. That's enough about Mini Mike, I think. <laughs> yeah, min, min, Miniature Mike. He's, he's not going to win anyway. Does everybody get a box? Yeah. <laughs> the, the, he's, he's immeasurably rich. He can... I forget what I heard. He could spend multiple millions of dollars on advertising each day up till until the election. He'd still be a multi-billionaire. He's well, last figure I heard, he was worth sixty-two billion dollars. I mean, that's amazing. That's insane. And my understanding is is uh, I'm sorry, I can't give credit to the author, but they laid it out about how how obviously he's trying to buy his way in, but the way he's spending his money is very smart. Obviously, on advertising, uh, he pays his staff three times uh, the average of other campaign staff. So he's actually buying their loyalty. He's funded many campaigns for politicians uh, that are in the House of Representatives. So he's bought their loyalty, and he donates to several, several causes – Buying their loyalty. Right. Now, on to Roger Stone. <laughs> Roger Stone, longtime political advisor and um, 
I, I actually found out on because he's a friend of Alex Jones, which is always funny. But um, the DOJ is looking to reduce his sentencing, right? And, yes. And um, attorneys, part of it, have already quit over it. Well, they quit over it. That that was all staged. You know, the left light loves drama. But he was he was uh found guilty on counts of lying to Congress, which is always funny. You can't lie to Congress as Congress lies to us on a, you know, minute by minute. I'm not even going to say daily. Adam Schiff, every time he opens his mouth, a lie is pouring out. But it's okay when Congress lies to the electorate, but heaven forbid you lie to Congress. Or, or Hillary Clinton lies about her emails. Or just... Well, Hillary Clinton was caught lying under oath. John Brennan was caught lying under oath. James Clapper was caught lying under oath. James Comey was caught lying under oath. Andrew McCabe was caught lying under oath. And, and the point is, I'm not saying that these people should get nine years for perjury. I'm saying Roger Stone was... Equal application of the law. Yeah, was unfairly giving a, given a long sentence. Now that they're looking to reduce it, people are quitting and making it political. Or just oh, Trump is 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 just trying to get his buddy out, and they're not looking to get him out entirely. They're just looking to reduce the sentence. Well, hopefully, uh, after he's reelected, Trump pardons. If if Stone Stone should get a new trial. For those of you that don't know. The jury foreman on his trial lied during the Wadir, uh, saying that she had never followed the Russian collusion case, the Mueller report. And then, boy, Roger Stone's – his defense attorneys must be god-awful because nobody found out till after he was found guilty that she's a liberal activist, ran for Congress, uh, constantly tweeted – about the Mueller investigation uh, and about Roger Stone himself. And she ended up the foreman on the trial. Amazing. Only in America. Right. I don't know. I always just liked him because he's funny. And <laughs> just watching him on Alex Jones, which I never take seriously. I just oh, always thought they were funny. Duo. He, he is a really funny guy because he's pretty quirky. Yeah. But, you know, the other thing, issue I had with, and here's another thing with the <clears throat> the hypocrisy on the left when they're always screaming about police brutality. Both him and Paul Manafort are older guys. These are old men who, when they were arrested, anybody else in these situations would have been told for uh, – their attorneys would have been told that they needed to surrender by a certain date, and their attorneys would have brought them in to surrender. These guys were – both homes were – had pre-dawn raids with men in full tactical gear, and you don't see that as an overreach and police brutality. Absolutely ridiculous. Now we got to bring a whole SWAT team for these old men. These these old political figures, yeah, it, yeah unbelievable. They, they didn't even raid Antonio Brown, and he's much more dangerous than Roger Stone. So, get help, Antonio. Yeah, oh well. Get help, buddy. I don't know how much help can help him. No, he he can get help. <laughs> um, moving on to something I just saw this morning uh, in a recent interview, President Trump said he'd have no problem voting for a gay president. Wait, uh, he, he, he's not going to vote for – obviously, he's not going to vote for Booty Gag. He's, he's in the race. But he's just he said in the future, just out of principle, he has no problem voting for a gay president. It really doesn't affect how well you could lead. And um, – which is, which is a positive because that's, that's always a part of, of a conservative – it's part of conservatism that I don't like is just, it's just getting mad over dumb stuff that doesn't affect you. So I'm more libertarian than that. I'm I'm not super religious. I, I mean, I grew up with a religious background, but over judgment of people just on that sort of stuff that doesn't matter is always a part of conservatism I didn't like. Like the f more far right, overly religious sort of right. And I think 
just President Trump saying that is is leading in a good direction for for conservatives to try and compete in a culture war. And by competing in a culture war, I don't mean conservatives are just cool with um, drag story time at libraries because I, I already I've, I've explained <laughs> my views on that sort of thing. But there's no need to be a stick in the overly be a stick in the mud because people should have the right to do what they like in their own bedrooms. Um, but since the beginning, President Trump has been the most pro-gay president uh, at the time of taking office. Sure, later, Obama said, you know, approved of gay marriage and uh, Hillary Clinton, people like that. That wasn't, that was definitely not their original positions. Uh, I remember a, a, a famous interview with Hillary Clinton is in front of an audience. And they asked, do you support gay marriage? And she said no, and the, and the crowd booed, right? And it, and it was only until mid to late 2000s where, where Democrats, you know, magically turned it around. And that's what they thought the whole time. And yet, yet, yet Trump has, um, he's appointed Richard Grenell, a gay man, to be ambassador to Germany. He's, he's, he's employed Randy Berry, another gay man, to be ambassador to Nepal. Um, he's talked about and thanked Peter Thiel for his support, who is the gay co-founder of PayPal. Um, he was a longtime friend with George Takei, you know, gay actor. They're not friends anymore because George Takei has kind of got off the deep end politically, but... Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> Um, he, he held up an, an LGBT for Trump flag at a rally back in 2016. And so, so, first of all, I think that's a positive. Second of all, he's been called a homophobe as far as all those other words for a long time. Everybody on the right gets labeled by the left. That's the way it is. You have no idea, so we'll just call you names. Right, but that, that's the one I least understood. It's, it's like... The... the, the 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 word you could call him last is homophobe because there's zero evidence of that ever. I just listed off all of those things. You know, uh, when he when he first took office, and and you know some Republicans, like I said, are really staunch in their religion. But he from the beginning said, "I'm not going to look to overturn gay marriage. That's just how it is. That's how the Supreme Court ruled it. That's just here to stay." And. I mean, President Trump was at one point a Democrat, a registered Democrat, so. Well, you know, all these names, it's funny. Like I said, I, I refer back to him being called a feminist, and yeah, we have the the, the audio tape of um, whatever that show, Access Hollywood audio tape. And I still go back to 1978, the start of Trump Tower, the person he selected to be in charge of the entire project. A female. That's how feminist he was. In 1978, he chose a woman to oversee that entire project. Uh, I heard an interview with her, and she was talking about how he always called women his women executive killers because in business they were – he always said they were way more ruthless than men and that he would never want to negotiate against any of them because they they had that killer mentality that they were, they were going to get the job done. So, yeah, he's a feminist too. <laughs> We're all fem. Hey, look, if you have right, if you lean to the right, you're 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 everything. You're homophobic, femin. You're a, you're a feminist. You're a misogynist. You're uh, xenophobic. Eh, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Hey, you know what? Come up with some ideas that we can debate. You know, you can always resort back to your name calling later when you lose the debate. Right. But it's just, it's just it's just funny the revisionist history of especially Hillary Clinton, just just like oh yeah I'm, I'm pro gay and I've always been and it's just, oh yeah well Hillary Clinton's another one that if you go back there's tapes of her as a prosecutor referring to young black men as super predators yeah so this this I can't even see what I want to say <laughs> you know. While they were extorting foreign countries, uh, getting all those donations to the uh, Clinton Foundation. Kind of funny, too, since we're speaking about Hillary, that the international wing of the Clinton Foundation, as soon as she lost again because she's a loser, 
all that foreign donations dried up because that I mean who you can't buy access to somebody who's sitting at home. No. So yeah, but, I mean, well, she's not sitting at home anymore. She's just talking. Oh my God! Why do people have this? She, what do you, what do you want? You want, and you want her to come on and tell her how she lo- loses and her fifty million excuses as to why she lost. Every excuse other than the fact that she was a horrible candidate. She rode the coattails of her husband. She, you noticed after they got out of office, she didn't go back to Arkansas and run for a, a senator from Arkansas because they knew the Clintons there. She wouldn't have won jack. She had to move to New York City, establish residence, and be elected in a far left leaning city. Because she, yeah, those that know her know. Would you would you take her over any of the current Democrat <laughs> candidates? Oh my God, they're all disasters. I mean, you got socialists, you got uh, you got a rambling old man. He, he talks about he calls people oh, lying, hey, dog faced pony soldiers. That's the best. Um, yeah, you got you've got a a woman who's lied her entire life. Pocahontas Get, gets caught in lies, which is funny because. Uh, uh, Danang Dick Blumenthal is another one who lied about his service in Vietnam. He's busted, and the idiots of his state continually vote this guy back into the Senate. So, you know, we sit out here and we talk about corrupt politicians, and yet we just vote for him over and over again. Yeah. It's a government of the people, for the people, by the people. Get involved. Pay attention. I agree. I, I I would love it. And stop giving up your rights. Yeah. I would love it if we had a lean government and we didn't have to pay attention because I don't think you should have to. You should just live your own life and focus on yourself. But um, unfortunately, that's, that's not The how federal it. government should do the bare minimum of what the federal government should do. This, and, and same with state governments. And, the, and most of the power should re- – should rest in a state government. They know what's best for their own state, not somebody that's 2,500 miles away from you, living in a cesspool in their own little political bubble. So, Speaking of federal government, one, one thing I, I do disagree with, with President Trump on, and I know he's, he's doing this for political reasons, whether he totally believes it or not, I don't know, but Social Security needs to go <laughs> at, uh, at some point. Well, and sooner rather than later. And I don't either, mean just get rid of it entirely immediately, but it needs to be weaned off to the point that... Uh, yeah, I, I can see that, but also it's it's uh, something that the left can always point to that they're going to save Social Security. I don't know how they're going to do it because uh, there's just not enough people funding it. it. It wasn't obviously another government operation that wasn't well-managed. By FDR. Yeah, well, I mean, and that's why I say stop giving up your rights. This whole Medicare for all. Hey, have you seen the way the government runs things? Look at the VA. It's an absolute disaster, and now these guys want to run an, an entire medical uh, operation. As far as I know, the VA has improved under Trump, but I still— Has improved. But... It's a disaster. The government—here's what I always tell people if for that think that we need more government. If you owned your own business, which obviously most of the people on the left don't have that kind of drive, but let's say you owned your own business and you had to contract out to another company for something you needed done that your company doesn't do, and one of the bidders was the federal government, would you actually even seriously consider their bid looking at the way they run government? No, They're that, a disaster. Well, that's the thing about Bernie Sanders' plan is is how exorbitant – the spending would be just off of his like estimates, and when's the last time a government project came under budget? So take his estimates and multiply it by at least you know another twenty five percent. We're we're gonna give everything away for free. Vote for <laughs> me, I'll give you everything for free. Who's gonna pay for all? And that's the whole thing when they ask him who's gonna pay for it. Uh, Focahontas always says, well, I have a plan, but she would never lay out what the plan is because she knows she can't pay for it. It's, well, it's just like, oh, let's give her a student debt, but we're just going to – we're going to be the ones paying for it anyways. We're not just – it doesn't magically go away. Right. It's just 
hey, instead of the students paying for it, the uh, the rest of America pays for it. Right. And here's the thing. You, you don't need a, a, a big, fancy four-year college degree. You could easily go to community college or vocational school. Don't feel like you have... Well, obviously, everyone listening to this out on the mall <laughs> right now is here. But for other people, you don't need to go to university, especially if you can't afford it. Or if you're getting something that doesn't even really need a, a big degree. Like, if you're going to be a doctor or something, that's different. But even if you're going into business... Just go to community college. Yeah. Uh, hey, if you're out there and you're getting your bachelor's in gender studies, good luck to you. Well, you're paying for nothing. I mean that too. But so, like I said, stop, people, stop giving up your rights and freedom for what you think is security. Um, and big Second Amendment, pro Second Amendment rally down at the Capitol today, twelve to two. Uh. For those of you on the left, that, which is funny because during the whole impeachment hearing, we kept hearing about how the Democrats got to protect our Constitution, got to protect the Constitution, all while they're at the same time trying to abolish the Second Amendment. And for all of you idiots making the argument that, well, back when the Founding Fathers wrote that all we owned, all the citizens owned were muskets, and now there's all these... Uh, War style weapons, oh, mate, hey, mate, you guys, oh, you well, guys, also, just drive me nuts. But guess what? It's also what the U.S. military. Guess what? Had the, at the government time. had the government only had muskets. Sure, they had some cannons and stuff. So yeah, they had more weaponry than the citizenry. But now, the whole Second Amendment is about arming yourself against a tyrannical government. And I'll tell you right now, man, this not under Trump. But when you look at this bureaucracy and what's going on behind the scenes, man, I've taught my kids forever that the government was corrupt. Until Trump got in, I didn't know how corrupt because now we're seeing all the stuff that's going on to try to remove him from office. And the good thing is these idiots are so inept that they can't even manufacture evidence and make it stick. That's how ridiculous they are. Well, in the Iowa caucus— they had, <laughs> they had some incorrect polling, and they even came out and said they had some incorrect polling. But they said, oh, we can't change it for the, the quote-unquote integrity of the election. You can't change the incorrect information because it's on uh, on federal documents, and you can't change it for the integrity of the election. Oh, yes. And um, we, we have Epstein killed in a max security prison. The guards are just... Not watching him, and, you know, the only thing keeping that story alive are memes, really. And it's just like, how dumb do you think we are? But we, what are we supposed to do, <laughs> you know? You know, lots of deaths around the, surrounding the Clintons. Coincidental. Yeah. All coincidental. All right, well, we're going to go get suicided by the Clintons now. <laughs> <laughs> I hope everyone has a good day. <laughs> go out and... Smell the sunshine. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you guys next week.